Hello, my name is Jared Pinargote. I am from Nashville, Tennessee. And my question is, are there any sources of revelation that we shouldn't trust? And if so, how can I make sure that the revelation I receive about Jesus Christ being my savior is something that I can trust on and build my life around? Thank you. That's a good question. How do you trust sources of revelation? How do you confirm that revelation that we receive? Well, can I just go to to a, a situation, it's just a couple of verses in Acts 17. Mm -hmm. um, and this is Paul on his second missionary journey. And he goes to um, a little place called Berea. We never hear it again. But he says in verse 11 that the saints in Berea, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Well, I don't know about you, but that kind of stands out as a red flag. Well, what, why, why would they be more noble? Not just noble, but more noble than them. And then they give the answer in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. And, and I've thought a lot about that in terms of what does it mean for me in getting my own personal revelation about Christ or even personal revelation about the things that the prophets teach. Um, and, and the answer here, at least in part, is that there's some, there's some work that I have to do. How do my thoughts, the revelation that I think that I'm receiving, how does it align with the scriptures? How does it align with what the, the prophets are saying? Um, and if I have a testimony of the prophets, then that's going to say, okay, this is what God is saying to me. Um, this is what the prophet is saying. And so we have some an alignment and it says alignment with the scriptures. So for example, there are times in general conference when I hear things and I go, really? Do, do I really have to do that? But from these passages in, uh, in Acts, my response now is, Heavenly Father, President Nelson has asked me to do this. I do have a testimony that he is the prophet. Will you help me get a testimony of what President Nelson is asking of us? I think to Gay's point, in the world that we live in, I think there are a lot of voices, people that are really loud and, and want our attention. And this scripture that she pointed out in Acts 17 made me think, about whether or not we have things in proper priority. And so I think one of the biggest answers to that question about how do I tell, the, the first thought that came to my mind was, is it something that invites you to do good? Mm -hmm. um, because the scriptures tell us, you know, if it inviteth, inviteth and enticeth to do good. Um, but on the flip side, I think we can receive personal revelation from a lot of different sources. We have people that will say to me, you know, I had a question and I listened to your podcast and it answered my question. And I'm like, that's awesome. I'm really glad. But sometimes I worry. I'm like, well, if all you're doing for scripture study is listening to a podcast, then we may have a problem. Yeah. And so recognizing where different voices are taking a place in your life. And for me, like the voice that I want the loudest is the voice of the Lord. And where do we get that? We get it from the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to, to pay attention to whose voice am I giving the most credence to in my life? Mm -hmm.